Okay. Oh, look at that. Cool. God, we can see the city from here. Oh, wait. Oh, oh yeah, we did talk we to Rachel. Ahead. Oh, Darren. Darren, what are you doing? Ah, Baron Felsbar, it's so good to see you. You look a tad petrified. I hope everything is rock solid in your life. My dearest Princess Paradise, you look stunning. You always, you almost managed to eclipse Contessa Petronella's debut at last year's season. You certainly bested her in your magnitude and your gravity. Darren sits in a circle of stones, making small talk with a perfectly serious expression on his face. When he notices you, he stands up and offers you and offers you his hand. My dear, my dear ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce my beautiful companion. Here she is, the crown jewel of the evening, Incria, the heroine of the crusade. Are you drunk, or is it something worse? Drunk on love, perhaps, Darren gives you a disarming smile. He looks around his social gathering of rocks. Life has failed to light us lately, quite the opposite, in fact. It has thrown us into the darkest plane in existence, surrounding us with legions of repulsive demons and dragging us into a struggle between forces we, or at least I, do not understand. If that's how things are, so be it. If life begrudges us opportunities for fun, we must make our own. Oh, Pat, you seem very emotional. Is everything all right? Hmm. Everything is perfectly fine. Nothing has changed at all. Darren smirks. The whole story was a little too much from the very beginning. The stakes too high. The secrets too serious. Oh, and we keep stumbling over them more than I like. What a what am I? Uh, what am I doing here? I have never really cared for high politics or games between forces beyond my kin. He gives himself a little shake. Look, Baron Felster has agreed with me, and he's a tough sided type who rarely expresses his misdeeds. If you wish, I can invite you to a dinner party where we are back in dressing. Would you like that? He's a craggy fellow, but a fine conversationalist. Not even the abyss can hurt us. We are literally standing on the corpses of a slain demon lord in the middle of an archipelago composed mostly of other slain demon lords and legendary monsters. As vistas go, this one is far more inspiring when you say, being of immense power, perish here in droves. So what hopes do we mortals have? And yes, I almost forgot. You are no common mortal. You are a heroine. You possess mythic power. You are chosen by the gods and so on and so forth. Darren smiles acidly. What do I what did I do to wind up in the company of such an extraordinary personage? I like your company more than like the company of stone. Darren pauses a little before answering, his eye glinting. Glinting. That was very sweet of you to say. All right, forgive my stupid performance. Perhaps I was a little overwrought. I've had it with these rocks. This little soiree wasn't my finest idea, I admit. Are you sure you're, you're all right? Ever since we got to the abyss, you've been act you haven't been acting like yourself. Sometimes I have this terrible creeping suspicion in here. Terrible and probably preposterous too. It almost seems like you genuinely care about me. Hilarious, isn't it? You figured me out. I do care about you, always. Except on the times when you're driven when you're driving me mad. Let 
Darren smiles deviously. Some dishes are only improved with the addition of spice. A dash of madness makes one emotion deliciously intense. Something strange flickers in Darren's eyes as he answers, choosing his words carefully. I should hate to become a burden on you. Or a threat. The brighter the sun shines, the darker the shadows cast. But there I go speaking gloomy nonsense again. Demons take it. Let us return to the company of our hard-headed guests. Kiss him. Let's forget about it all. Darren kisses you back with enthusiasm, then says after catching after catching his breath, I cannot say I find the abyss terribly inspiring, but let's spend time let's spend some time alone together. I really, really hope no demons fall to our heads and spoil our day. I'm pretty sure that the shadow demon's doing something. I thought we were going to get attacked or something. Six hours. What just happened? Happening. Sosio. Sosio is drawing something, but when he notices you, he hurriedly falls over the paper. Struggling for inspiration. The priest shakes his head. By drawings, it's just not flowing the way it normally does. This place doesn't inspire creativity. Don't tell me you've managed to find some beauty. He just told us we did. He did. No. Encouraging a little, Socio shows you a few sheets of scratch of crossed out sketches, but you can still recognize the visas of Lucianerin. Now I tried, but I can't. Not here. May the goddess forgive me, but it's beyond my powers. Thank you. Um Darren, anything else? Darren looks rather distracted. He is staring into space as though he as though he's listening to something deep inside himself. Finally, he notices you and his lips quirks in a nervous smile. So many people have cursed me and told me I'd enter the abyss when I die. I suppose I rather definitely subverted their expectations by getting here when I'm still alive. If anyone can get themselves out of this mess, it, it's us. You, you really seem to believe that. How astonishing! Well, at least I'm following a fearless leader who seems immune to pains of melancholy. Traversing the abyss with a miserable commander would have been utterly unbearable. What do you say about spending some time alone? I cannot believe I'm saying this, but this blasted abyss makes me recoil at the very thought of intimacy. I just can't relax at all. I can't believe you're saying it either. As if demon horrors are waiting to ambush me around every corner. Darren shrugs helplessly. I should go. Uh, is this our? Yeah, it is. Cool. Kiss was that much? I do not remember that. Retrievers, all them. Where's that from? Nevia, when we killed her. Medium. Leads on. 
I will learn the weight of my sword. I will have faith in the inheritor. I am the first in the battle and the last to leave it. With her eyes half closed, Sila whispered the words of the oath of Iomade's paladins. Trailing off, she opens her eyes and sighs. How do we how do we end up here? I never would imagine I find myself in the abyss. We've overcome everything we faced so far. We will get through this as well. That's right. Thank you, Ankria. I've always had a little I had I've always had faith in us and I will keep having faith, but sometimes a girl needs a few words of encouragement. Everyone else down here is just us. Oh everyone. Weird. Wolf is with Graybor? Hi a chief wanna talk? Nope. Graybore. Nope. Where's the hand of the inheritor, my guy? No, well, at least we know we can rest in here. Oh wait, I also bought this. Oh crap, we... that's annoying. Ninio. It's time for the experiment. I hope they'll I hope these words inspire as much enthusiasm enthusiasm in you as they do me. What's this experiment about? You see, I have decided, though dared would be a better term, to address an issue which up to now I have preferred to avoid due to my total ignorance in this sphere. Ninio lowers her head in embarrassment. I realize it's hard to believe that I, a person of Let's skip the false modesty. Superior intellect could not know something so simple, but it's never too late to fill a gap in one's knowledge, right? I'm talking about friendship. To be honest, at first I planned to assign the writing of this article for the encyclo encyclopedia to a co-author uh, co of some kind. But then I met you, my loyal follower, and suddenly I thought I could write it myself. Neil seems to have reached the limit of her courage and she looks away. Hold on, so you're saying, so you're trying to say you consider me your friend? You misunderstand me. I don't need friends. I have no desire to spend my time on them when I could spend it on new experiments and discoveries. Ninio explains this to you as though she is speaking to a five-year-old. I just want to learn what it is to, what it's like to have friends for the encyclopedia, nothing more. I realize that you would like to consider me your friend. Who wouldn't? I'm a scientific luminary after all. So I do apologize for disappointing you. So you've never had any friends? But well, she don't remember much. I have no sense in I see no sense in them. Well, if it needs to be done, we'll do it. Let's get started. I'm glad you agreed. Many would have considered my request too personal and refused. It's good that you that you're above such squeamish sentiment. Here, I made a list. I based it on my observations and individuals around me and on my personal knowledge of the topic, which I have to admit is, is far from comprehensive. She hands you a crumpled piece of paper. Study it well. We'll start as soon as you're ready. Friends, smile at each other, gossip about their other friends, drink alcohol together, no longer required. Sometimes argue, sometimes copulate. Do we have to follow this list? She looks at you with disapproval. You're trying to say that I made it for nothing? I've developed a perfect a perfect methodology that involves all the mechanisms of friendship between two individuals. By all, but by all means, sure, let's just abandon the list. Read the list. Friend, point number one, friends smile at each other. You've raised your eyes to Ninio, who has already fixed a malevolent grin on her face, the kind that will make you saw yourself if you saw it in the dark of the night. Respond with a brief smile, keeping the unnatural grin on her face. Ninio hisses through her clenched teeth. You call that 
a smile. Come on, try again. I find this funny. Give her a wide smile. You bow into Ninios and she stares right back as you grin as widely as possible. A minute later, intense silence. Ah! She massages her cheeks with her hands. I never imagined being a friend was such an exhausted business. So what's next on the list? Friends gossip about their other friends. I've made some preparations for that. She produces several pieces of paper come from her sleeve. Come on, let's do it. Before we, uh... Regal. Excellent choice. What do you think of them? I am indifferent. Oh, how interesting. And incidentally, yesterday I saw him. She picks up a random piece of paper and reads it. Eating worms. It doesn't sound like him at all. Really? Excuse me, I'll try again. Yesterday I saw him. She picks up another random piece of paper and reads it. Does she not know their names? Drank it from a puddle? Do you have any idea who we're even talking about? Nia becomes a little embarrassed, but only a little. No, I don't make a point of remembering those I travel with. That's why I prepared these universally apl <laughs> applicable pieces of gossip. She raises her face with several pieces of paper attached to it. Ugh. Oh, thanks for the info. Truth be told, this whole experiment seems like sheer stupidity to me. But how can we learn the stupidity? Learn that stupidity is stupid without doing stupid things. We need to finish what we started. Oh wow, come on in here. She gives you a satisfied nod and stows her papers back in her sleeve. All right, stage two is not complete. What's next on the list? Point number three, friends drink alcohol together and they say, and then says, and then it says no longer required. All right, I should cross that out. I should cross out this point. I wrote this and then I checked the encyclopedia and recall that I've already conducted that experiment. And judging by the time, they're judged by the same encyclopedia, and especially by an odd stain on a particular page, it would be unwise to say the least to try and repeat it. Friends sometimes argue. Point number four. A new heap of papers appear in Neil's hands. You are uninterested and disinterested in this experiment, and you can't even tell the difference between those two words. Maintain a skeptical silence. You're such a freak that even Rubber God feels sorry for you? What? Your mouth stinks so terribly. Your backside envy. Oh wow, that's funny. Silence. Your head is on a suitable for use of a receptacle for food. Silence. Hey, I'm running out of insults. Come on, join in the discussion. One more word. You can kiss my ass. Not too creative, but it was due. Now, we can definitely be considered friends. And on that note, I conclude the fourth part. Friends sometimes copulate. Oh yes, that. Take off your underwear. Not all friends have to do that. Is that true? Are you sure? What an unexpected and interesting piece of information. I must confess, I wasn't so thrilled about this whole copulation idea from the start. It's so nice that science does not demand this sacrifice of me today. This thoroughly awkward experiment is finally concluded. I have learned what it means to be a friend, and now I can write an article about it in the encyclopedia. Ninio rubs her nose with a pencil. I am happy that it's over. I am once again convinced that friendship is the most foolish of all occupations. You did it all wrong. Friendship is more than just smiling, gossiping, figuring, and sex. Is it? Concluded all the assigned actions typical for two friends. Of course I could have compiled an extensive list, which would have included joint food ingestion and senseless banner with the aim of showing each other in the least attractive light. But how would that change the situation? Do you know what I should write in the encyclopedia? Friendship is a set of primitive rituals intended to help individuals forget about their loneliness. However, I have no interest in, interest in that. I see my loneliness as a sign of my uniqueness. 
The one who re the one who leads the way it always done. The one who leads wait. The way is always alone. Now I have some now I have time to answer your question. I have to go. Where's Ryan? Up in the land of the fate. Well, let's take a gander on how they live down here. We just need to follow the route, or we'll stay here forever. This isn't the land of the fate, it's the abyss. You say that like there's a difference. Sure, some Oglins have horns, others have wings, and still others have horns and wings. But they're all the same Oglins in the end. What route? Oh, there are a lot of them. Let's see. Obrick starts cutting his fingers first and foremost. Never agree to dance with them. You set one foot in there. <laughs> Fayish frolics and you won't be able to stop. You'll just keep prancing about. You'll still you'll just keep prancing until you drop dead from exhaustion. What else? Don't accept any gifts and always give something in return, or else you'll have to serve them forever and ever. Don't eat or drink anything without permission, or they'll turn you into a beast or even a cockroach. He continues to take off his fingers. There's just too many to list. I know them all from my grandma. She knew so many songs about the face, so many tales. Look, War Chief, instead of telling me instead of me telling you all this, how about you just follow my lead here? Alright, you can't go wrong that way. And if you see anything suspicious, you just give them this. Obi thrusts a hand in your direction with the index and little fingers extended and swirls it back and forth. It's the best way to ward off any a sorcerer and sorcery. If you show it to the Fae, it can't give you the evil eye. Oh wow. Alright. Something is wrong. I feel like I've lost something. Originally seems confused. Or not? It was Desna who lost me when we descended into the abyss. She has been my invisible protection through all the years, and now, now I no longer feel the divine helping hand on my shoulder. Can you still enter your dream realm? Maybe. I think so. Originally pauses, listen to something deep inside her, and then smiles shyly. Yes. My dreams are still there, and nobody will take them away from me. What is this gift you mentioned? You saw it yourself many times. Whenever something threatened my life, the goddess sent her divine butterflies to carry me away. Her powers no longer protect me now that I'm back in the abyss. She abandoned you? No, no, I definitely hope that's not the case. The goddess still wishes me well, I'm sure. It's just that the abyss is so far from Elysium, Elysium that she cannot that she either cannot see me or can't reach me here. She protected me while I was in Galorian, but now I can only rely on myself and you. I see, trying to put yourself in harm's way anymore then. I'll try. I hope my invasion skills haven't gotten too rusty after so long under the goddess's protection. I'm sorry your dream turned into a nightmare. Don't be sorry for me, it's all part of my journey. It would be very naive to imagine my path to redemption as a, as a subpoint of pleasant dreams only. I've already described my countless evil deeds to you. Mortals suffer from nightmares born, into, born of their past, and I am glad that I have a chance to experience them as well. That shadow from your dream, who was that? Please don't act. I don't want to re be reminded of it. I knew him in the past, and I was hoping that he would never reappear in my life. We both caused each other a lot of pain. Please don't make me relieve it all again. Why did the shadow in your dream call you their venomous butterfly? Arushale doesn't look at you in the eye. I poisoned him. My lies, my capriciousness, my temptation. No, I can't. Let's talk about something else. I'm sorry that I don't have to. I don't want to remember who I used to be, and what I used to do to others. All right, I'll go. don't have a relationship, but let's ignore that. 
just have a friendship. Let's do the hand of the inheritor. Oh boy. Here far, here far from the eyes of strangers, I can assume my true form. But in least an era, I will remain hidden. It seems this sorrowful and unsettling place would be what we call home, at least for the time. What is our next step? In Elisa Nera, there is no one as powerful as Shamira, the right hand of Nauticula herself. It is she who rules the city while her, discredible, her, while her indiscrutable mistress is away. As sad as it is for me to admit, you must try to gain her favor if you want Elisa Nera to take us seriously. What do you think of the one you call the champion of Galorian? I would be lying if I told you that I don't observe you with some trepidation. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if you falter. For power and responsibility represent the most difficult trial of all, and many righteous souls have failed, have failed to pass it. How well known am I among Probably not at all. No one in the Lucianera knows your name yet. I have a question about our mission. Tell me what you know about Alicia Naira. Chaos has many faces. When Chaos decided to manifest itself, manifest itself in the form of a city, Alicia Naira was born. There are places in the abyss that are darker, bloodier, more dangerous, and deceiving, but I cannot imagine a place whose significance would eclipse that of Alicia Naira. When Naticula built the city, she employed everything of the essence that ever existed in the abyss. Demons of all kinds from every corner of this gloomy plain live here. And what is more, the Lady of Shadow opened the city gates to visitors from other planes, and strangers swarmed the city. Merchants and travelers, mercenaries and explorers, mages and bards, creatures from all planes. Those daring enough to visit the abyss chose Elisa Naira as their destination. The city is divided by two sets of walls, between which lies the quarters open to outsiders. One set of walls protects Nanticulous guests from the rabble, and the poor, who are desperate enough to violate their ruler's orders for a chance to get a coin of two. The other set of walls protects outsiders from the city's nobility, who can flout Nantigula's recommendation without any reason at all, merely on a whim. But do not think that there is a single place in Elysianira that is safe, for danger lurks around every corner there. But can you tell me about the abyss and demons in general? Demons. The hand of the inheritor speaks softly and heavily, as if trying to break through some inner resistance. They are the youngest race of the outer plane, and the wildest in origin. Once entirely different creature, creatures used to rule the abyss. They were Glypas, the embodiment of chaos. They were much less human-like. But then one entity conquered up the idea that primordial chaos could be mixed with an evil mortal soul, and that is how the first demon was created. No one remembers the name of the creator now, but the creation still lived and prosper. They overthrew the Glypas and became the essence, the soul of the abyss. And I honestly cannot say which was worse, before humanity was added to it or now. I'd like to know more about Shamira. Shamira. Shamira the Ardent Dream. This place once reigned with purity and glory, but today it is tarnished with shame and treachery. Born in the upper plains, she was granted the honor she was granted the high honor of kill, of kindling the flames of dream in mortals, to fan it and protect it from frigid dreams of sorrow and cynicism. Shamira performed her duties faithfully until she made one single mistake. I will spare you the details, but all I will say is that the grandeur of the dream she fostered was equally was equal only to the bloody price of its realization. It was a majestic, most somber dream, and Shamira let it come true, then she fled. Either cowardice or certainly of her rectitude kept her from standing in front of her superiors and answering for her actions. She hid in the abyss, where in particular the Lady in Shadow embraced her ardent light and darkened it with her blackness. A few centuries passed, and we heard her name again. Now she was called the mistress of Elucianara, Anticula's loyal companion and favorite. That is how we knew for certain that we were right on the fateful day we condemned Shamira. Our only regret is that we failed to foresee her fall. Tell me more about Anticula. The Lady in Shadow, the first of the succubi kin and likely the most dangerous demons have ever spawned by them. I cannot tell you much about her, for she cunningly hid in the shadows, eluding the daggers of her foes and the schemes of her rival. All I know is she gained power after she overthrew Vyra Vaxis, who was the Lord of Shadow Demons. 
She took his powers, his realm, and his subject, and that merely whetted her appetite. Many demon lords have perished since then, cut down by her treacherous and sunning strife. With each fallen enemy, her power grew stronger and her glory greater. I cannot tell which of her weapons is more is more dangerous. Her unerring strikes, her, her seductive charm, her unbridled courage, or her astonishing stealth. You must be aware of all these dangers. What is so dangerous about Hephzimara? She's the worst of all Baphomet's offspring. She gained this grim title in the bloody conflict with her own brothers and sisters, and she brutally wiped out everyone who stood in her way. She did not even show mercy for her own mother and doomed her to a cruel execution. As a reward for her eagerness and, loyal and loyalty, Baphomet granted us granted her use Baphomet granted her use of, mo of his most cherished tool, the Templars of the Ivory Lambert. However, now an even greater threat has risen under Hemzamara's rule. Unusual power for demons, the source of whose strength is unknown and most dangerous to us. The Crusaders have encountered such demons only a scant few times, but should an entire army of such fiends appear, Dresden will fall, Nerosian would fall, then all of Avastan would follow, and even Galorian would not stand a chance against them. Putting an end to Hebzamara's machina machinations, that is our mission. I see you bless this rock of this cavern. Indeed I have. If even on Galorian, the abyss harmful influence can unsettle mortals and disturb their rest. What then can be said in the abyss itself? itself the very heart of pain and sin. But worry not, champion. By the power granted to me by, Iom by Iomade, I have consecrated these dark caves. You will find respite here and recover your strength and sh should the need arise. Let me ask you a personal question. There shouldn't be any secrets between us, champion. The very instant that Queen Garfrey sent you to this place, I swore to myself that I would do everything within my power to ease your burden. Okay, you brought Garfrey up, so what are your thoughts on Garfrey's latest order? Ayamade has never striven to rule over mortals. She only guided and helped them. So I shall follow her example and never try to interfere with the way of life or question it. But I will say, that I am certain of the necessity of our mission as I am the sharpness of my blade. What surprised me, and truth be told, unsettled me too. There's a cruelty by which my noble sister in arms, Godfrey, dispatched you here. The queen had every right to give orders to her commander, but a right without righteousness is worth little. Thank you, Hand. I see, this is why I like you. Is there anything you can help me? I will follow you everywhere, remaining invisible, so our enemies will have <clears throat> not the slightest suspicion of my presence. When you need advice, I will give it to you. And when you are stricken by disease, I will come to your aid and dispel it. Oh, no matter how long you may have traveled through the abyss, you can always be sure that I am near and heaven will not forsake you. Oh, that's cool. How do you hide yourself from the demons? This magic spell turns me into an invisible spirit, hidden from the eyes of everyone who was born in the abyss and whose heart has been blackened by evil. Those who have from other planes are capable of seeing if they use magical sight of some kind, as well as those few whose woeful fate was to be born and raised here while carrying light and purity in their soul. But my protection from demons is very effective and will work until I can, until I find myself, until I decide to appear in my true form to join the battle or help someone in need. How does it feel to be in a place like this? This is not my first foray in the abyss, and this is the Although this is the first time I have come here to watch and talk rather than do battle. On more than one occasion, I and other warriors of heaven have descended to this evil and corrupted place to bring retribution to the vile and great salvation of their victims. For better or worse, heaven and the abyss cannot engage in open war, though I can recall some moments when we seem to teeter on the precipice of just that. All we can permit ourselves are raids and skirmishes along the border. Just up. Ultimate, is ultimate victory over the demons even possible? It is, but it's not the kind of victory you dream of. The hand of the inheritor remains silent for a while before speaking in a heavy, hollow voice. The abyss lives where evil lies in the heart of mortals. Demons don't just appear from nothing. Most of them originate from the souls of people who committed themselves to evil while still living. That's why the war with the abyss, even if ever, even if 
should it ever start, may be never ending. The place of each fallen demon will be immediately taken by, by a new one. That's why our one true chance to secure us in victory will emerge only after we exterminate all evil in the world. We must achieve a situation where not a single soul will voluntarily resort to evil deeds. When mortals themselves, by their own free will, turn to the light all at once, but no one in the universe knows how to achieve that. And many have, and many who have tried ended up as tyrants and false prophets. May heaven guide me even such a fall. May heaven guard me against such a fall. Why did you follow me in all this? Because my duty and my honor demanded that I do so. We were facing a great mission and a colossal challenge. And a colossal challenge. While those who remained behind merely had the honor of protecting what you have already liberated from those demon hordes. That is a good way to look at it. My heart told me that my help would be needed here more. You're such a... Ugh. I have to go. You will face great challenges in this cursed place. Stay strong and remember that the fate of Galorian depends on you. Naira, Let's go rest. And then we'll go back, I guess. I think that's everyone. Suture went. We took Ember, I feel like we did. Yeah, we did. That's for us. Perfect. Let's do scroll scribing plus thirty two. Look at that. me and I wanted to look at something actually because land technically you can do restoration and stuff so I don't understand that's annoying Wait, what let's look at this what are we missing my guy what a waste of him having it it's like basically saying oh yeah you guys have to multi that class who has it oh you have it oh no you don't oh fine Let's see. Oh, so far down we can go. Look at these seeds though. Crushing. Rubonic plague. So still in the air more just hideous seeds. Why is there there? I'm 
about it there with the common the source kill me. He doesn't uh, You're probably seeing this quite the catch in your village, eh, Socio? A handsome cleric and a set of farm boy, and a sea of farm boys thinking of sheep's wood and manure. I was fortunate to be born in a wonderful place where the people are beautiful in body and soul. I am no better and no worse than anyone else there. Serious way? Conversation went great before. The arrow says that one of the commander's companions needs. Grayboy gives a shy smile as he lights his pipe. The excited glint in his eyes betrays his impatience to share some news with you. Finally, he fi finally he can't contain himself no longer. Interesting news has reached my ears, Andrea. There have been talk among the most disreputable citizens of Illusionara that someone is hiring the most vicious thugs and cutthroats to kill a certain Willardus. A familiar name, isn't it? I strongly suspect that this is the same Willardus who set me up during the assassination of Darazan. I'll call that a fortuitous coincidence. Um, who wants him dead? An anonymous entity who apparently has more brains than Willardus and is smart enough to keep his name a secret from his employee. I bet it's the one of the Descarites, Darazan, who was the Descarites lackey after all. And even though internal strife never ends within the snake pit, they always team up with the external threat. How do you obtain this information? I am an assassin. If I don't know how to obtain how to obtain rumors, I'd be out of work. I visited a few taverns, including a place called Bad Luck. It's a real cesspool. The information did you give him the money for that? And information flows into the flow of all the city. From all over the city. I was approached by someone who was looking for thugs to hire. He was the one who told me everything. I would have found out more if I had talked to him longer, but after he called me a bloody larva, he needed a dentist, and I needed a new mug of beer. Well, who is Willard? He takes a slow, thoughtful draw from his pipe, and he answers in a business-like manner. Here's what I know about our prey. He is a demon and a wizard, powerful enough to enjoy his high status in the city. But lately, he has surrounded himself with a small army of mercenaries, but they are mere thugs who lack the skills of professional bodyguards. Ever since, Willard has found out about the body on his head. He hasn't left his mansion. I suspect it's full of traps. I wouldn't underestimate the danger of facing Willard. They were looking for real dad daredevils to bring him down, which means this whole business is most certainly risky. 
or maybe even suicidal. What do you suggest we do? I'll be damned if I let a bunch of incompetent thugs get to him before me. No, first I must have a little chat with Will this. And then they can do whatever they want with him. How about we leave those how about we leave those hapless goons in the dust and visit Wilder's mansions first? Sounds like an exciting challenge, challenge doesn't it? Alright, let's play Wilder's. How do we find him first? His mansion is in the upper city. It's called the House of Wicked Knowledge. I'm not sure how wicked his knowledge is exactly, but he's a truly wicked, but he is truly wicked when it comes to business arrangements. Do you want to kill him? Not necessarily. Perhaps I'd rather have the full weight of compensation and gold. And yet, the longer my vengeance is delayed, the stronger my desire grows to collect the death. In a way. Alright, let's pay this will of this a bit. Excellent. I think that conversation would involve some good old-fashioned violence. Alright, somebody. Oh yeah, we dropped some on there, didn't we? Fine. So we have to bring him. Who are we leaving? Darren's not happy. So we'll bring him around so he can try to have some fun. So he's coming. Um we could technically leave Sila. Technically. Oh, wait, wait. Finian, do you have anything, though? We talked to everybody but you, actually. Huh, nothing to say? Darren's coming. You're coming. Um. I feel like Woodrow is great for this area. Though. But I kind of want to leave Ember. We're just going to attack people on site, I feel like. So he's out. Ninio would be curious. Oh, I'll have to fix her toolbar, wouldn't I? And see. a stone to get back where we were so it just brings us oh i thought it was going to bring us back that's annoying not a fan of that to the border I guess oh we didn't talk to Avu oh cause the hand has so much to say
if he did grow. I once met the elder Shika of the first world. The elder Shika of the first world. That was a baby dragon with them. He saw me and rushed up to me yelling, "Dragon!" And I say, "Are you a dragon too?" And he says, "Yes, me dragon. Yes, great little guy." Shika the mini of one of the eldest, a divine fake creature of tremendous power, said to be able to reshape the very fabric of the first world on a whim. Set a title for role for many entities. Both male and female were born this name over the ages. All have been chronomasters with mastery over time. Time is strangely within the first tribe. Time acts strangely within the first world, but Shike seems to be able to manipulate. Indeed, there are many forms and personalities over time, past and future. May sit may well sit within a Shaka within Shaka together all out of time, as they all seem to speak with the same voice. You grown up a bit. Yep. Yeah. The dragon was incredibly proud of herself. Dragons usually grow as they get older, but I grow as your poverty increases. So don't be fooled. Remember, I'm still a kid. A huge, scaled, flying kid with plain dark magic at her disposal. <laughs> wow. I have to go. Then I have to go too. We have to go. Both of us. So, Lucianaira. Eh. Gonna destroy that. Great Boar shouldn't have much on his top bar. It's really just gonna be Ninium. I changed anything on her, or if I did beyond one. I'm your blade. Wait, what is? Let us not hesitate. Oh yeah. You know what you're doing. Good. Mm, I think I'll do this. I'll do this on camera. So when I come back, hot bar should be done. 